here, and this is Cutter Kyle, and welcome to Wheels of Fury. <laughs> We're back for part two, me and Matt and Killer Kyle, and this will be, oh, we're doing good. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know how many movies I was going to pick, and yeah. unfortunately I didn't make a list, so I have to fucking scramble. Yeah. But anyways. Number ten. So, this movie definitely was... Very cool. I saw it years ago, obviously. Even, I think it was over 20 years since I've seen it. And obviously, it's a play as well. And it was a remake when I was in the hospital in 2016. It had Vanessa Hudgens on it. Right. And, uh, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Grease. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You fucking didn't think I was going to say High School Musical. Well, what is said Vanessa Hudge is just like, she's in that. No. Ew. <laughs> Anyways. Grease was a very good movie. And yes, once again, it's a two-parter. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is in the second one. And it's not as popular as the first one, but anyway. No. Which is odd. Yeah. This movie has John Travolta, you know, him, he started out doing commercials and in his own, and a TV show, and then he got Saturday Night Fever, and then of course, being in Greece, Olivia Newton-John, and then this movie, there's a lot of good music in it. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of catchy, a lot of good karaoke, I think. <laughs> <laughs> karaoke, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, they're basically, it's these two, again, almost like a Romeo and Juliet, but not really. It's high school before high school musical, if you want to go that far. But, I mean, you got John Travolta, who plays a, a biker, tough guy. He's got his gang with him, and she's like the pretty schoolgirl that just moved in from... I'm not even sure if it was England or Australia at the time, right. but she falls in love with them. They eventually get together. She decides to have a makeover to impress him, and that works. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of cool scenes in it. Like, he's singing in the car shop. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's... Yeah. Uh, she and yeah. apologize to the people that actually know the words. Yeah. And the one where she's trying to decide whether she wants to continue doing beauty school or something. Yeah, beauty school dropout. Right. Yes. And uh, yes. you're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Summer loving. So, yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, Sandra D. Yeah. Yeah. Hopelessly devoted to you. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, that really tugs on your heartstrings. Mm -hmm. I, it does, you know. It's a really good movie. And, you know, the remake was actually really good, too. Yeah. Like, it was a live performance as well, I think. I think so, here, a while ago. But I watched it in the hospital. And, you know, from what I remember. 
it was a very good movie and a uh, side note from that, this is like right after Vanessa Hudgens' dad passed away, I think while the production was going. Oh, yeah, so when she does, because she plays Rizzo, so when she does that, I can't remember the name of the song, when she does that song, she automatically thinks about him. Yeah, that makes it much more... Powerful. Powerful and realistic. Yeah. And you know, talk about West Side Story and the two groups that are in that movie, the Sharks and the Vipers. Oh, Grace, you got John Travolta with the T-Birds and Sandy with the uh, Pink Ladies. Yes. Yes. It's crazy. How long? <laughs> I've seen the movie a while ago, and it's still being played to this day. And, oh, I know. But just being able to re remember that, anyway, yeah. That's well, amazing what the mind can do, though. I mean, True. I just remember all that kind of... And for me, like I've mentioned many times, I have somewhat of a short memory in a way that I try to remember. I can't retain a lot, but when I do remember, then I can just say it. Yeah. But it makes me look like... I don't remember, so why the fuck do I put it on my list? But I saw the movie and I enjoyed it. That's yeah. all you need to know. Oh yeah. Probably one of the funniest scenes in that movie is the principal is doing the announcements and it's like the end of the school year and talking about kids growing up and they're going to be leaving school and going on and getting jobs and of course you got the other like the secretary or whatever that plays the uh, xylophone and go through the announcements and finish up the announcements and of course the lady that's playing the xylophone she's getting all emotional and then that gets like the principal or whatever and she the announcements and she's emotional like okay then yeah so... Definitely a classic if you are into a underdog story and a story about someone that came from rather hard times and ended up being one of the most popular figures in sports. And there is three versions of the movie and then two versions that came out just a little while ago. And if you watch them, I'm sure you'll love them. And of course, probably one of the most popular songs that came from the movie. I'm not sure how popular it was before the movie. But it definitely, I believe, became popular after the movie, as I Have a Tiger by Survivor, but yeah. the movie, Rocky. Yeah. Yeah, they, you know, I was talking to somebody about that the other day. Kids asking me when the third movie came out, and then for some reason, I thought it was like 83. Well, it's not 83. No, it was... You know, 75, I believe, 78, and then like 83, and then of course, the other movie that he must have done a few years ago. So I'm mistaken there. Well, there is the three, no, 
I said three. I think there's like five of them. Rocky movies. Oh, okay, yeah. And then there's... Rocky Creed. Bal yeah. There was Rocky Balboa. And there's Creed, which is about Apollo Creed's son, wanting to be a boxer. And then there's Creed 2. And I think it's, the, it's either the first Creed or the second one. I think it's the first one where... Uh, Apollo Creed's son wants to fight the son of a Russian guy. Oh, jeez. That pretty much killed his father in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the name. Played by Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren, yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> but yeah, like, you, you probably think, oh, it's a movie about a boxer. Who cares? But it's a really good story. Yeah, that's like watching the wrestling. Like, it's a movie about a wrestler. But it's a really, it is. It's a really good story. Yeah. And, you know, you. It's kind of like the stereotypical in a way. So, like, Rocky falls in love with this girl, Adrian. Yeah. Adrian's like the nerd. Yeah. She was, you know, just like a nerd, like what you would probably think of as a nerd, maybe. And, you know, he falls in love with her. He's this big muscle guy. Yeah. And that's the woman. So, by the end of the first one, I think, the first or second one, yeah. it's the class in line of, Yo, Adrian! You know, and then that's kind of, you know, she gets into the ring and, you know, they hug and whatever, and a crowd of people are around them. Yeah. What's interesting about this movie, and not taking uh, anything away from the wrestler, is how fucking brutal the fights were. Oh, absolutely. I mean, fucking, like, Sylvester Stallone, I believe, almost died fighting Dolph Lundgren. I think so. Because he was hit somewhere. I don't know if it was the spleen or... I'm not even sure. It's something ruptured. But, yeah, this was a very interesting movie, you know, it just goes to show you what the box, well, kind of show you what the boxing world's all about. Kind of, yeah. You know, they're gonna eat thunder and they're gonna crap lightning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was a video put out long, quite a while ago and it's on Facebook and it's of this little kid, couldn't be older than close to a year, I'll say maybe eight months roughly. <laughs> like, is able to, like still in diapers, but able to walk and stuff. But just following along with the training sequence yeah. and the Rocky movie, the setups and the passing of the medicine ball back and forth and yeah, all this other stuff. Beating, you know, doing beating up the raw meat, hitting the speed bag, the speed bag, punching yes. the meat in the meat locker, and yeah, all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the funny thing is, I think it's the third one, second one, but like Apollo Creed and Rocky are like best of friends. Well, they end up having a match against each other and, like, just <sighs> beat each other up mm. so aggressively. It's like, damn, you do, you guys are friends and you're brutalizing each other. It's another one of those things, you know, if you think I could do that to my friend, what can that do to you? Yeah. But, yeah, if I'll do that to my friend, think about what I'll do to you. Exactly. Number nine. So this movie, I saw that by parents when I lived there. And I don't know if you want to call it in bad taste. I don't know. I thought it was really good. Mm. Repre representation of the Special Olympics, kind of. It's called The Ringer. Okay. That. 
Johnny Knoxville, and he plays a con artist. And he was trying to get money for his uncle. And he goes, okay, well, there's the Special Olympics. You go there. Yeah, you win, you get the gold or whatever, and then you get money or whatever. Yeah. So then he pretends to be this mentally challenged guy called Jeffy. They go to the Special Olympics. They meet, I can't remember Catherine Hagel's character's name. Yeah. I can't remember his name. But anyways, he meets her. She plays one of the volunteers of the Olympics. And... Mm, Eventually, he meets, so he meets these guys, and yes, they are all mentally challenged, they're not just actors playing, but he meets these guys, and they get to know him, he eventually breaks it up that he's not who he says he is, and they still remain friends, and there's this one scene that really, you know, I don't know, it's like, I don't care what you think about Johnny Knoxville, but the fact that there's a scene where the uncle's sitting on the park bench with him and he says something about, oh, you want to help out these retards or something. And so Johnny Knoxville stands up and he goes, don't ever say that fucking word again. Those are my friends. Yeah. That's like, so I mean, if Johnny Knoxville can stand up for people like that, then, you know, I make some cool, I guess, I don't know. So there's this thing where they have the, the metal, and he eventually breaks his silence that he's not who he says he is. He's, his conscience is like fucking, it gets him, so he has to confess. Yeah. Well, then she finds out, got to, gives him a surprising slap in the face. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and, you know, after a while, the, you know, at the end of the movie, they do get together. Right. But it just goes to show you, again, like we talked about, how, I guess, different, it, you know, it's a different perspective from somebody with a disability, I guess. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. But... Yeah, this was a good movie. Some people might call it offensive. But from that, it was like, so there was an actor who decided, because his son's got Down syndrome, that he wanted to have like a campaign or something. It's called Let's End the R Word. Yeah. Now, personally, when I was growing up, I never in a million years when hearing the word retard and think yeah. about somebody with a mental disability. True. So I guess I'm on a different boat than everybody else. Yeah. But if you're not offended, then by shit like that, you should just watch the movie. It's yeah. a pretty good, it's a good movie and it's a good representation about, you know, I guess, regular people interacting with people with disabilities. Yeah. Basically. That's all I can say about that. Next, I have... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A movie that came out uh, 2006, 2007, I think. It's a very good movie. Very, it's another one of those movies that derived from a cartoon TV show. Or not really a TV show, but a cartoon years ago. And I've seen it. I enjoy it. If you're into that kind of thing, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you've got kids, again, they'll enjoy it. I, like, I've seen it quite a few times and I still enjoy it to this day. But it's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Mm -hmm. The live action one or the cartoon? The live action one. With uh, the Jim one, Carrey yeah. playing the Grinch. Okay. Yeah, that's 
It's it's just like you got this Grinch, this creature, I guess you call it, was a little kid that lived in Whoville and you know was made fun of as a kid and all this other stuff. So he goes up to a mountain and secludes himself from everybody and then. You know, he doesn't like Christmas, he doesn't like people, and all this other stuff. He ends up winning a contest of some kind, and he steals all the presents, and Christmas trees, and all this other stuff, and he's like, he's like so happy that he did it, because he ruined Christmas, and, you know, nobody's going to be happy, they're all going to be upset. Everybody, when all the Who's and Whoville, really you know, they know that the presents have been taken and Christmas trees are gone and all this other stuff. But it's like, even though we don't have all that stuff, we have each other and that's the utmost importance. And so they start singing and of course that gets to the Grinch and, you know, his heart grows and brings back all the presents and the t trees and all the stuff he stole and you know he makes amends and you know they're uh, all of them are standing around this one big Christmas tree and they're singing that Abu Dore, Abu Dore. yeah <clears throat> and it's like okay yeah it's a funny movie yeah it's entertaining Jim Carrey does a very good version of the Grinch. You've got, I think, Jeffrey Tambor play the mayor of Whoville. And Molly Shannon plays the mother. Molly Shannon. But, but it's good, like, it's funny, it's entertaining, it's good for kids, but the story behind it is just so good that, either, that Christmas is not about presents and toys and all that other stuff yes it's nice to get presents on christmas you know and that's great but it's the time you spend with your friends your family and your loved ones that is the most important thing on any holiday christmas thanksgiving or anything like that what a long shit no, i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, did you see the cartoon yeah. And you like this one better? It's not, like... Like, I mean, it's comparing apples to oranges, not Yeah, I know. Way. But... Like, the cartoon version is really, really good. But, the like, the movie itself, the way that, you know, Jim Carrey was able to bring the Grinch to life and what it must have taught to have, like, real... Actors play the Who's. It, it, it was just, in my opinion, very well done. Not saying the animated version was, you know, it sucks or whatever. It's not. It, it is really good. But just the movie, like the movie, is along the same lines as the cartoon, but just like, the way they were able to. Have Jim Carrey bring the Grinch to life and the story and all this other stuff. Yeah. Really, really good. And I mean, what it must have took and how long it must have took to do... I'm sure, like, it was an outfit and makeup yeah. on his face and whatever. That must have took hours. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, it did. I saw most of how the movie was made. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it. I do. I grew up watching the cartoon. Yeah. And, you know, it's cool to see live action. Yeah, yeah. Movies come and it's popular again, oddly enough, 20 years later. I know. So, I mean, that's kind of the way it is. <laughs> You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. Grinch. You're a yeah. Are you? yeah. Foul! So we're going to make an access of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Number seven.
So last year we talked about Robin Williams in the Dead Poet Society. Right. We did talk briefly about Good Will Hunting. Yes. I was going to put this on my list, but I thought... I think I went through more detail with Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Than anything else. <laughs> yeah. So... This movie was actually another one that I saw in class. And I thought, okay, this is cool. I mean, my teacher not only being a fan, but like... This movie showed a different side of Robin Williams that yes. at the time I didn't see before. I mean, you watched Huck, it showed different elements of him as a person. Yeah. Same with Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Same with, well, Dead Poets Society. Yeah. This movie definitely, I am surprised his face wasn't raw at the end of it, but <laughs> what dreams may come. What dreams may come, yeah, yeah. And it definitely shows a life after death. Mm -hmm. you know? He gets in a car accident and then it shows him in heaven and it shows that it, he had a Dalmatian when he was living mm -hmm. and the dog is young and he, is, he comes over to Robin and keep getting Junior, that's the spirit guide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it shows the afterlife, it shows his wife grieving through his death. Yeah. And then she eventually kills herself. <laughs> so he automatically thinks, oh, now that my wife is dead, we're going to be together. But the thing is, in this movie, when you commit suicide, well, that's kind of fucking ironic now that I say that, but... Yeah. When you commit suicide in this movie, you're in hell. <laughs> And there's a bunch of different faces, and he sees that. He sees her in one of the faces, and it's just a very, it is a hard movie to watch, you know. Nah, especially now, you yeah. know. But it's a good movie. Like, again, it shows his dramatic range even more, and it yeah. shows, I mean, he cries a lot in the movie, but it's still one of the best movies that he's ever done. Yeah, it just goes to show you how versatile Robin Williams was as an actor. Yeah. Whether it be doing something funny, like Patch Adams, or something a little more serious, like Goodwill Hunting, or something so dramatic as Dead Poets Society. Just one of the best actors there's ever been. One of the few actors, or famous people that I've learned about, and who have passed away, and they actually brought me to tears. Yeah, that's how powerful it was. Oh yeah, there'll be another. No, there won't be another one like him. Nope. Alright, let's bring this party back up to life here. Next, for me, <laughs> with this movie and a certain TV show, there's a lot of controversy between who likes what and, you know, who their fans have different names and all this other stuff, and it's this movie in particular. The other, like the TV shows, are very good. I became quite a fan of this movie. I'm kind of a fan of the shows. Not really a massive diehard fan of either, but I, like I saw this movie and I really enjoyed it. And I, I think I've seen the other parts of it. I haven't seen the most recent ones, but I've definitely watched at least a couple variations of this movie. It's say one of the best kind of sci-fi action movies there is. Star Wars. Oh, yes. Yes. And a lot of people love Star Wars. 
a majority of people love Star Wars. Yeah, there's people that love Star Wars, and of course there's people that love Star Trek. Yeah, the Trekkies and the Trekkies and Star Wars guys. Yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, you know, I mean, I was I wasn't even alive when the first Star Wars movie came out, but right. You know, I tried to be a fan. I really did. I even rented. I think it was Return of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. I think. Maybe it was the Empire Strikes. No, I was one of the two. <laughs> one of those ones, yeah. I liked it. You know, I did. And then that was like around the time the Fan and Menace came out. Right. So yeah. I wanted to go see that movie. And well, as soon as it said intermission, I'm like. Yeah. Are you fucking up? Oh. By the pod races, I was ready to pass out. Yeah. Like, it was a good movie, don't get me wrong, and I'll probably like it now. But, just, again, with my short attention span, yeah. it's like. Intermission, are you serious? You, know, you get bored pretty fucking easy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you get bored really easily, anything, like, relatively long, you're gonna lose so much interest in so quickly. I mean, there's Star Wars movies that came out after that. Yes. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if there's still more coming out. Well, there, I know, I know there's Rogue One. Yes, there's that. And then before... Before that, there was Revenge. No, that was that's not it. Did you say Revenge of the Sith? That's not it. Anyways, there's yeah, there's a Rogue One, and there was one that came out with. Well, I don't know if they're gonna continue on with it or not. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, that's a good idea, but at the same time. How many more stories are there? Like, I was trying yeah. to go through when Darth Vader was a kid, I guess. But, like, yeah, you know, you saw Star Wars, Phantom Menace, and... Yeah, I liked it, but, uh, again, too long. Yeah. The guy that played little Anakin Skywalker yeah. was... Eh, it was a jingle all the way. Yeah. But, you know, Liam Neeson was in it. Right. And then there's Jar Jar Banks. <laughs> so, I mean, it was alright, but I, I mean, it could have been better. It could have been better. I mean, I wanted to watch and become a fan of Lord of the Rings. And I can right. Be, again, very long movie. Yeah. So, it's hard to, like, fucking keep up. Yeah, I know. Luke, I am your father. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And like I said, like, I've seen the movies and I do enjoy them, but I, I'm not one of those people that is like, absolutely die hard into it. And, you know, I go, I'm mad about it or anything. Like, I enjoyed it. I like it. But like, I'm not an over the top. Star Wars fan, I'd say. Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of it, but I'm not like... Oh, yeah, you're not like a super fan. Yeah. Like my younger brother. Yeah. Guys, got fucking lightsabers. <laughs> yeah. But be like, yeah, your brother with Star Wars, be like... Garrett Watts. And Harry Potter Gert Watts is a, a YouTuber I subscribe to. He's really good. Yeah, yeah, check him out if you want. Yeah. He's got like a bunch of wands and stuff. Lee, he's into like definitely the magic and the Harry Potter stuff. Like one thing he really got into was Avengers. I can't remember which one it was, whether it was the new one or one of the older ones, but he really got into it. Anyway. Number six. This 
so this movie's random. Like, I saw this when I was 10, and that's like the last time I've seen it. Yeah. So, I know from memory, I just have a hard time with who the characters were. <laughs> so, right. this is like set back in the old, like, 18th century, I'm not even sure. Right. It's a very long time ago, and things were not easy, but it's basically this kid with polio, and I'm not even sure if that's what he has, I just know he fucking has, you know, he's in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and he gets pushed into this garden, and, you know, it's, uh, basically all I can, there's, you know, he gives the, his helpers a hard time. Because he doesn't like being who he is, and yeah. it's hard to have him get adopted by a family, so yeah. I guess by the end of it, there's this guy that comes to the place, and he adopts two of the children, he's one of them, yeah. and stuff like that, or he is the father, I can't remember, but it's, I remember that scene. And I remember, I finished watching the movie, and I'm crawling to my room, and I just start, like, fucking crying. Mm -hmm. And I'm ten years old, and I'm like, wow. I saw, apparently, you know, obviously it was a deep ending. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's also a book, too. Mm -hmm. So people can either watch the movie, or, and there's not very many, like, Oliver Twist, there's not a lot of variations of the Secret Garden and media, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's more or less you buy the book. Yeah, basically. Book or movie. Book or movie, one or the other. I think the main difference between the movie from the 60s and the more recent movies is the apes, I believe, were like people in costumes. Yeah. Whereas with like the more recent ones, I believe they're CGI. Yeah, no, they are for sure. But even like the fact that you got these computer graphic imaged apes that look realistic and can talk and Riding horses and using weapons and all this other stuff. It, it sounds really bizarre, but it's like it's such a good movie. Yes. Number eight. So this movie, I'm going to try to... See if I can get it correct because I haven't seen it for a long time. But I saw a trailer for it before that, and I thought, yeah, I really want to see it. And I did eventually. And somehow it showed up on whatever channel. And very good movie. Yeah. You know, from the 70s. And a lot of the movies from the 70s, well, anything from the 70s was great. But it's called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. It's about this hitman that's ordered to buy this boss to go to the village and get his daughter also. Bring him the head of Alfredo Garcia. So, you know, it's just him traveling and meeting all these people and, you know, there's a lot of violence in it as well, but he eventually finds her, eventually goes over, sees Alfredo, uh, so he does meet Alfredo Garcia, you don't see the killing obviously, Right. you just see this guy and he's got a duffel bag with him, and he tosses it into the car and he's driving, and you see him driving and there's goats in the way, and it's basically, yeah, it's kind of like, it's weird. It ends in violence as well, mm. but it's another one I wish I had on DVD. Yeah, I really should have just bought it, but 
it's one of those movies that really, you know, I love violence and, you know, what a, what a better title than Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Yeah, really, hey? Don't think. For the 70s? Oh, yeah. Come up with a title like that? Wow. That's how hardcore it was back then. Oh, I know, right? Just crazy. Yeah, yeah. My next choice is a movie that I've seen pretty much all the parts to. It's very, very good. It's scientific. It's action. It's kind of drama. Suspense. It's along the lines of Something that you would be into if you're into archaeology and fossils and stuff like that. The very first movie came out in 1993 and the most recent one was 2015. 15 or 16, I think. And, of course, the infamous song from the movie. Da, 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 na, 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 Anyway, Jurassic Park. Yeah. I remember the first one very well. I wasn't allowed to see that. <laughs> I mean, I was and I wasn't. Like, I don't know. I didn't see it. I saw the first few minutes of it and right. I must have got bored but I saw it again in history for some reason in the ninth grade. And this is a good movie and yeah. it's again one of those things where it takes something that's made 25 years ago yeah. and you go oh you know what let's make this better through the decades or through yeah. if it does do very well and it obviously did oh so, yeah absolutely you know you got jurassic park then jurassic park 2 okay then jurassic park 3 i guess well there's jurassic park there's the lost world yep there's jurassic park 3 and then there was <clears throat> jurassic world yes and that's that a sign theater right and Chris Pratt was in it. Yes, yes. You know, it, that was a good movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. But again, it's another one of those things that the technology is completely different than it was in 93. Oh, yeah. Which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you have, and also a lot of people make fun of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> you know, Wayne Knight, he plays in the movie. You've got... Samuel Jackson. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of different characters. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a fun movie. Yeah. You know, it is. And if you're into dinosaurs or fucking fossils, I don't know. If you're yeah. into any of that, then obviously you would enjoy the movie. Yeah. Number five. So... This movie is another one I saw when I was a kid, back in 1992, so I guess about a year earlier, and it's being remade this year, Will Smith is in it, mm -hmm. and I've yet to see it, I don't think I'm gonna see it, but Aladdin, yeah, there's three Aladdin movies, and I, uh, as much as I like the third one, I believe this one was obviously the best. Obviously a good pick. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, you got Aladdin, he's a street rat. The first scene, you know, you have Jafar's character. Well, he's not even Jafar yet. You know, it goes and you see this giant tiger head. Mm -hmm. 
with glowing eyes and it talks and you know, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah. But the movie, like, so Aladdin's a street rat and then he meets Jasmine. Jasmine's a princess. He falls in love with her. Mm -hmm. He gets beaten up. He finds a lamp, you know, and of course, the genie exists. Mm -hmm. So the genie helps him through his life and he finally gets to meet Jasmine. He pretends he's a prince for some yeah. fucking reason. Yeah. I can't fuck it. Yeah, well, it's a fantasy, whatever. Yeah. So he's a, he pretends he's a prince and he does this whole dance thing downtown. And then they find out later that he's a lie. And mm -hmm. Jafar tries to control her dad. Mm -hmm. I, and really, I don't know what the new movie is going to be about. Yeah. A lot of people are just shitting on it, and I'm thinking, just give it a chance. Again, yeah. give it a chance, people. Come on now. And it's going to be nothing like the fucking cartoon, but just give it a fucking chance. Like yeah, it's, it's a different way of looking at things. Like, yeah. It's a different way of looking at things, like a different way that I looked at the remake of The Grinch compared to the Dr. Seuss cartoon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's completely different. True. I think one's better, but you know what? You'll think one's better if you watch Oop. Aladdin. Yeah. So. <laughs> 10,000 years can be such a crick in the neck. neck. Another reason why Robert Williams is so fucking good. Oh, yeah. And you look at the genie, and you know, that's the. Robin was always an animated character, like, an, always an animated character, person. Mm -hmm. Whatever. His role in that was just him. Basically, the people at Walt Disney basically wrote and created the genie character solely in part and specifically for Robin yeah. Williams. And what's interesting is there was a controversy where they did something I can't remember. They did something wrong. What happened? Williams didn't do the second movie, so it was like, yeah, he didn't want to have his name attached to like the merchandise they were selling. Yeah, that's the it. kids, and he was just doing the movie because he wanted to do the movie and all this other stuff. And they pretty much went against his wishes, and he was very displeased with that, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, the second guy who played the genie was Dan, I can't remember his last name, Homer Simpson. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and then, of course, the third one, Robin Williams, became a part of it. Yeah. You know, they, were, they reached an agreement, so he did this movie. Uh -huh. Of course, they had a cartoon yeah. on Saturday morning, and Dan was a part of that, so... Yeah. That's pretty cool. I and mean, you know, maybe I won't see the the new one. I don't know. But I just it's gonna be it's just gonna be weird if I do see it. Yeah. Obviously. So I don't know. I think a lot of people are probably gonna have a difference of opinion having Will Smith play the genie and I mean I don't think he'll do a bad job at it. He may not do as good of a job as Robert Williams, but he'll do his best. Oh, I know, I know. Okay. My next choice is a movie about a guy that has a family and he's divorced from his wife and he has his son and you know he's trying to be a good influence on his son and all this other stuff and then something crazy happens and it ends up being a very interesting story 
and moving. It's really well done. It's really funny. And I certainly enjoyed it. If I don't know if anybody else has seen it, it whether they enjoyed it or not. I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, the movie's called Santa Claus. Uh, it's with uh, Tim Allen. Yes, Tim Allen. Yeah, I saw it in the theater for sure. I saw that movie in the theater and I didn't see the second one. Right. But I saw the third one. Yeah, I think. I don't know if there's three. Anyways, I saw the two at least. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching Home Improvement. Mm -hmm. I know. As soon as I saw that Tim Allen was going to be in the movie, I thought, I want to fucking see it. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, it's one of those... Because I had such, and I still do, to a certain extent, the close relationship with my dad. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, you know, their bond was really well done. Oh, yeah. Very, very good. You know, again, the kid, of course, the mom gets a, has a divorce mm -hmm. on Tim Allen. You got Judge Reinhold as the stepdad. Who's also a psychologist. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get the kid to be a part of the family, whatever. Mm -hmm. Tim Allen becomes the Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it goes from there. Yep. And then the third movie, it could be the second, I don't know. You have Martin Short in it playing Jack Frost. Mm -hmm. I saw that one in the theater. That was a good one too. Yeah. You know, it's for kids. And that's all I could say, you know. That's just it. I mean, if you're an adult and you enjoy it, cool. But I, it was good when I, when I was a kid, and that's, you know, I don't know. I just don't have that much of a desire to see it. Mm -hmm. I still like Tim Allen. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, to a certain extent, but I still yeah. like Tim Allen. So. Yeah. Anyway. So this is going to be a part three, I guess. And I'm really enjoying this. I hope you are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Trip down that way, Lane. Yeah, for sure. Well, as far as movies goes and being a kid and stuff like that. Anyway, talk to you later. Right, I mean, in a little bit. Talk to you in a little bit.